Shalom, shalom, Zion. Shalom. Shalom to my Mishpaka all over the world on this Yom, on this first day of the week. Shabuah Tub to you. I'm wishing you that, uh, proclaiming that I uh, pray that you have a good week. Shabuah Tub. Shabuah Tub to you worldwide, wherever you are, to the whole house of Yasharal, to the older brother, Yahuda, to the younger brother, Ephraim, or Ephraim, to the stranger, to the former stranger, the former Gur, the former uh, Goyim, the firm, former Gentile, the former nation who is no longer a nation or no longer amongst the nations, no longer a Gentile, but indeed has engrafted into the house of Yasharal, whereby becoming a fellow citizen and whereby becoming privy to the same covenants and promise and inheritance that was given to Yasharal and to Yasharal alone. So I salute, I honor the whole Bayif of Yasharal on this day, the whole house, both uh, the older brother Yahuda and the younger brother Ephraim and the stranger, the whole house, this is all the whole house of Yasharal, the whole house of Yasharal. Shalom, shalom to you on this day. Mishpaka, I just want to speak for a moment um, regarding something that has been a mystery to many of us. Uh, it has been a great mystery, uh, particularly in the uh, Christian Circe, which most of us have our genesis. Uh, and even outside of the Christian Circe, uh, this has been somewhat of a mystery. Um, but I declare on this, y'all, that when Yahushua was giving the parable of the sower, uh, the word of Yah, the seed being the word of Yah, uh, Yah being the sower, uh, when his Talmudim asked him the meaning of the parable, he exclaimed to them that uh, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the rain. He says, but to them who are outside, it has not been given to know. He says, thus they see with eyes, you know, they see, they're seeing, and with ears, they're hearing and do not understand. So I submit to you, Zion, that the closer we draw to Yah, that the closer we aspire to draw to him in Ruach and in truth with, with our imperfect selves, with uh, our dirty selves, uh, just, you know, seeking to get near him, just, just seeking to be clean, just wanting to be clean, just wanting to be pleasing to him, just wanting to be perfect, even if, perfect, even if perfection is outside of our reach. Uh, we want to be perfect. We hunger for, perf for, for perfection. We hunger and we thirst for righteousness. Even if it is right outside of our reach, we yet still reach for it. And we hunger and we thirst for it. And when we seek Yah in Ruach and in truth with our imperfect dirty selves, He begins to reveal things to us. He began to reveal things to us. And one of the things that he has revealed to me that I want to share to that I want to share with you is the mystery of Malchazedek. Is the mystery of Malchazedek, Malchazedek, sometimes called Melchizedek or Malchazedek. The mystery of Malchazedek. Who is Malchazedek? Who is he? Who is the man that met Abraham? Uh, after he had had the battle with the eight sovereigns. And he met this Malchazedek and gave him a tenth of all the spoils that he had gathered. Who was this Malchazedek here? And how does this Malchazedek relate to the Malchazedek in the book of Abrin? Uh, who is described as having no beginning and no end. No beginning and no end. So who is 
Melchizedek, who is he? Who is he? Who is this mystery man? Who is Melchizedek? Y'all willing, by the guiding and leading of the Ruach HaKadosh on this Yom, uh, I pray that he clears up that mystery for us on this Yom, such that uh, after this video, there will be absolutely no doubt as to who Malchazedek is and how you and I fit in that mystery and how you and I fit in that mystery. So beginning reading in the book of Abrin, or Hebrews, the seventh chapter, I'm going to read verses one through three to add some context to this mystery to add some context to this mystery. So beginning at verse 1 in Abrim, our Hebrews, the seventh chapter, beginning at verse 1, it reads, For this Melchizedek, sovereign of Shalim, Kohen, or what the world calls priest, of the Most High Elua, who the world calls God, who met Abrahim returning from the slaughter of the sovereigns and Baruch him what the world calls blessed. As a point of note, uh, I tend to use a lot of Hebrew words uh, in the place of unclean words, in the place of unclean words. And so, so you'll hear a mixture of words as, as I do these videos. Uh, for instance, uh, I don't say priest, I say kohen because priest is a pagan word. Uh, a uh, priest is a a pagan who serves in a pagan temple uh, in the same capacity as a Kohen, as a Kohen. Uh, so I don't use the word priest because it's pagan. I use the word Kohen. Again, I don't use the word God because God is not a title. God is a name of a deity. Uh, in Babylon, uh, God is the name of the Babylonian deity of fortune. He is a sun deity. He is a Babylonian deity of fortune. So I do not use the word God. I use the Hebrew word Alua. In the uh, modern Hebrew, it would be Eloa, Eloa, Eloa. In the Paleo Hebrew, it is Alua. This is a singular term meaning mighty one, meaning mighty one. Uh, Aluahim means mighty ones. Elu. Elohim means mighty ones, Sing, uh, plural, it, it's plural. So we do not serve Elohim, we do not serve uh, Elohim, mighty ones, we serve a mighty one, the only mighty one, who is Alua. So we do not serve God, who again is the Babylonian deity of, uh, he's a sun deity of fortune, and God is also a name for uh, Godan or Wudan. Uh, this is also his name, God. So I don't use these names. So I am uh, making this disclaimer so that, and I'll try my best that when I use Hebrew words to uh, give the meaning of the Hebrew word, uh, but uh, sometimes the Hebrew word, in most instances where I'm using the Hebrew word, the English word used there is indeed a pagan word, is indeed a pagan word. So reading again, for this Melchizedek, sovereign, and again, I use sovereign in, in, in place of king, because king or ing, uh, king derives from ing, ing is a god, he is a pagan god. So king derives from the god ing, so I don't use king, I use sovereign. For this Melchizedek, sovereign of Shalim, Kohen, or what the world calls priest, of the Most High Alua, what the world calls God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the sovereigns, and Baruch him, what the world calls blessed. But again, blessed is a pagan word, blessed, blessed, blessings, is a pagan word, and it derives from the pagan word bletson, bletson, which um, is a pagan blood ritual. It is a pagan blood ritual of idols, a pagan blood ritual. 
So I do not use those words. I use Baruch. Baruch means what they call bless. Bar uh, Baruch, excuse me, means what they call blessed. And Barak means what they call bless, singular. And Baracha means what they call blessing or blessings. But I don't, again, I don't use those words because they are pagan. Uh, they are identified with a pagan blood ritual. So I just needed to paint that context in case there's someone new listening who doesn't understand the Hebrew words that are being used in place of some of these pagan words. So again, Abraham returning from the slaughter of the sovereigns, sovereigns and Baruch him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. His name being translated indeed, first sovereign of righteousness. And again, uh, uh, indeed, Malchazadek, Malchazadek means uh, my sovereign is righteous. My sovereign is righteous. Here it says sovereign of righteousness, but it actually means my sovereign is righteous. Malach, the Hebrew word Malach means sovereign, and the Hebrew word Zadek in the modern and Zadak in the paleo means righteous, means righteous. Zedika, a zadaka means righteousness. So uh, Malchal Zedek means Malak, meaning sovereign. Zedek meaning righteous. Malchal Zedek means my sovereign is righteous. My sovereign is righteous. This is a key piece to understanding who Malchal Zedek is. This is a key piece to understanding who Malchal Zedek is. So uh, his name being translated indeed, first sovereign of righteousness, and then also sovereign of a Shailene. Shailene. What you need to understand here is Shailene is Yarushalim, or Yarushalam, or Yarushalayim. Uh, he was the first sovereign of Yarushalayim, the, um, the city of Yah, the very city of Yah, the very place where he has placed his name the very place where his eyes are, are always fixed upon, are always fixed upon the place out of all the cities upon the arrest, out of all the city upon the earth, this place, this is the place where he has chosen to place his name. This is the place where he has chosen to place his name. Indeed, when the renewed Yerushalayim comes down, it is going to descend in this place and in this place Yerushalayim or Jerusalem is where he is going to make his abode and in, in where he is going to establish his throne well the throne has already been established in the arrest through Dawu his, his throne was established in the arrest through Dawu because he being a righteous sovereign he being a righteous sovereign will not come where he does not have a legal right to be. He gave the arrest to mankind, to Adam. He gave the arrest to mankind to rule and to govern. Thus, uh, he being Ruach, he being Ruach and this being the physical realm, uh, he being righteous, he does not have a legal right here yet. He does not have a legal right here yet. And he gave uh, dominion of the arrest to mankind. And right now, for a short season, Hashatan has rulership over it. Hashatan has uh, sovereignship over the arrest. Thus, he being righteous would not come where he did not have a legal right to be. So he, in turn, uh, used his righteous servant Daoud to establish his throne in the arrest throughout eternity. Thus, he declares that he would establish the throne of Daoud forever, forever, and he would never lack a man to sit on his throne. Thus, Yahushua came from the loins of Daoud, from the tribe of Yahuda, from the tribe of Yahuda. We knowing that Yahushua is. Uh, Yahu, Yahuwah in flesh. He is Yahuwah in flesh. The word became flesh. Yahuwah created a body for himself to dwell in. 
And in this form, he came as our deliverer, Yahusha, meaning Yahuwah is deliverance. Yahusha is who many call Jesus. Yahuwah is who many call God. Both of these are pagan names, so if you're new to listening to these videos, you won't hear me use these names. So he used Sovereign Daoud to establish his throne in the arrest throughout eternity. And he himself, Yahuwah himself, is going to sit on the throne, establish through Sovereign Daoud, and govern his people as Sovereign and Alua throughout eternity. Throughout eternity. So he will not come where he does not have a legal right to be. So we see this Melchizedek here mentioned in uh, Abrim, the third chapter, was the first sovereign of Shalim. Shalim meaning completeness. Uh, Yerushalayim, or Yerushalayim, uh, completeness. Shalom, complete shalom. Uh, this is the place where Yahuwah has placed his name because he is indeed Yahuwah Shalom. He is Yahuwah Shalom. Yahuwah, <coughs> excuse me. Yahuwah is Shalom. Yahuwah is Shalom. So this Melchizedek, and I don't want to make this video too long, was the first sovereign of Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, Shalim. That is sovereign of Shalom. That is sovereign of Shalom. Yahuwah is Shalom. Yahuwah is Shalom. Here, here, uh, then also sovereign of Shalim. That is sovereign of Shalom. Listen, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but having been made like the son of Alua, remains a Kohen for all time, for all time. Now, this Melchizedek that Abraham met, was he indeed that Melchizedek who has no beginning and no end? Was he indeed that Melchizedek? Or, or was he a representative of that Melchizedek who has no beginning? and no end. Well, let's explore that. Reading from Yashar, or commonly called Jasher, this is uh, an apocryphal book that many neglect to read, and uh, in doing so, they're doing themselves a total, a terrible disservice. Uh, you need the research why the Catholic Circe removed these scriptures, and I emphasize scriptures, why they removed these scriptures from the compilation of what you call a Biblos. Again, I don't use that word either because if you research the word Biblos, she is a goddess. She is a goddess. Uh, her uh, father is Helios, a sun deity, a sun god. Soon, uh, if you're just coming out of Babylon, you begin to understand that it's all about sun worship. It's all about sun worship. That's why the compilation of scriptures that that we use that uh, many of you call a biblos is indeed called a biblos uh, it is uh, one uh, causing us to mention other mighty ones on our lips which we have been commanded not to do and two it is subliminally bringing us into sun worship because that greek goddess her father's name is indeed helios biblos was the patron goddess of the city of biblos of the city of Byblos, an ancient city of Byblos. Byblos was known for papyrus, for paper, for papyrus. It was known for its export of papyrus, uh, which was used, which um, uh, they used for scrolls, for writing down uh, words on, on paper. They were used as scrolls. And so thus, because this city, uh, main import was papyrus, or uh, paper, which was used for scrolls, uh, <laughs> the, the, the pagan Christian fathers named this book after her, a Biblos, a Biblos, and it's not a Biblos. If you want to use any name, you, you call it a Sefer, call it a book or a scroll, but don't call it a pagan goddess, a Biblos. So I don't say Biblos. 
I don't I don't say that I don't use that name anymore just to add some more context but again uh, Yasha Jasser is indeed scripture it's scripture just because you and I have been deceived to believe that it isn't has no bearing on whether or not it's scripture because indeed it's scripture it is scripture so reading from Yasha to add more context or Jasher the 16th chapter the 10th through the 12th verse we read and Bera, sovereign of Saddam, Asadum, and the rest of his men that were with him went out from the lying pits in which they had fallen to meet Abram and his men. And Adonis and Adanizadek, Adanizadek, who is Machazadek, uh, Adanizadek, who is Machazadek, it reads here, Machazadek, sovereign of Yerushalam. Hear me, the same was Shem. The same was Shem, the son, the firstborn son of Nuak. The firstborn son of Nuak, the same was Shem. Went out with his men to meet Abram and his people. You see, this is why you need to read the Apocrypha because it gives you, it adds more context and it clears up uh, vague areas and dark areas and mysteries that you would not ordinarily get from just reading the 66, the traditional 66. This is why you must read them. They are scripture. Hear me. They are scripture. Nevertheless, and Adon and Adonai Zedek, who is Melchizedek, sovereign of Jerusalem, the same was Shem, went out with his men to meet Abram and his people with bread and wine, and they remained together in the valley of Melech. Malach. And Adon and Adani Zedek Baruch Abram. Remember, I don't use blessed. And Adani Zedek Baruch Abram. And Abram gave him a tenth from all that he had brought from the spoil of his enemies. For Adani Zedek was a Kohen. I don't use priest before Alua. He was a Kohen before Alua. Reading the same account in Barashith, or Genesis, the 14th chapter, verse 17 through 20, we read here, Then after his return from the defeat of Hedorlaoma, Hedor, excuse, excuse me if I butchered this, Hedorlaoma, Laoma, Hedorlaoma, Hedorlaoma, Ha do la oma, ha do la oma, of the sovereigns who were with him, the sovereign of Sadum went out to meet him at the valley of Shave, a Shaba, that is the sovereign's valley. And Mahazadek, sovereign of Shalim, Yerushalam, brought out bread and wine. Remember, he was the first sovereign of Yerushalam, or Jerusalem. And Melchizedek, sovereign of Shalim, brought out bread and wine. Now he was a Hohim of Alua Most High. Um, this is a second witness. This uh, bears witness to what we just read in uh, Yasha. Uh, he was a Hohim of Alua Most High. He was a Hohim of Alua Most High. Of him. He wasn't him. He was a Kohen of his. He was a Kohen of Elohim Most High. It goes on to say, He Baruch him and said, Baruch be Abram of Alua Most High, possessor of Shamayim and Aret, possessor of heaven. And I don't use heaven because heaven alludes to the Elysian fields. This is a pagan term. Uh, pagans believe in an Elysian fields. They believe in a heaven uh, where their mighty ones abide and they have this belief that when they die that they are going to reside with them in Elysian fields in heaven in Elysian fields so heaven is another pagan term we use Shamayim we use Shamayim which is the correct term uh, Sha meaning deliverance Mayim meaning waters in Hebrew so put together, Shamayim, meaning waters of deliverance, 
waters of deliverance. Many of you, if you're walking in truth, you understand that there are still waters above us. They are still there. They have not been removed. They did not uh, go away during the deluge of the flood. They're still there. There are still waters above us, and we live on a, on a flat, plain earth, and there's still water above us. It's still water above us. I don't have time to address that. This video is not about that, but there's still waters above us. Hence, what is above us is called Shamayim, waters of deliverance, waters of deliverance. So I don't use heaven. So possess, possessor of Shamayim and earth are Adets. And Baruch be Alua most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. He gave him a tenth of all. He gave him a tenth of all. So now we have context that the Mahalzadek that met Abram after the battle was indeed Shem. Was indeed Shem. Shem was a Kohen, was a Kohen uh, in the order of Malchazedek. He was a Kohen in the order of Malchazedek. Hanuk was also a Kohen in the order of Malchazedek. Nuak was also a Kohen in the order of Malchazedek. Adam was the first Kohen in the order of Malchazedek. And from his loins came Shaif commonly called Seth. From the loins of Seth came uh, Hanan. From Hanan came Hanush, and so on and so forth. Yarad and uh, uh, Matushalak. These are all Kohen in the order of Melchizedek. These are all Kohen in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. So here, this Melchizedek was indeed Shem. Was indeed Shem. Was indeed Shem. So now, how does this relate to Abrim, the seventh chapter, when it is declared that he has no beginning and no end? That Melchizedek has no beginning and no end. Here's what you need to understand what you need to understand. You see, Shem proceeded not from the loins of Levi. He came not from the loins of Levi, thus uh, not being a Luim, a Levitical Kohen, not proceeding from the loins of Levi, thus being a Levitical Kohen. But Shem Melchizedek proceeded from the loins of Yahuwah himself. He was born from above. He was born from above. He proceeded from the loins of Yahuwah himself, thus being a Hohim in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek? Melchizedek is Yahuwah himself. Melchizedek is Yahuwah himself. Hence, Melchizedek, the meaning of Melchizedek means, my sovereign is righteous. Who is our sovereign? Yahuwah is our sovereign. Yahuwah is our sovereign. Who is righteous? Only Yahuwah is righteous. Only Yahuwah is righteous. He is our Hohim Gadol. He is our sovereign. He is our sovereign. He is Melchizedek. He is Melchizedek. Thus, uh, Shem, not being, not coming from the loins of Levi, but came directly from the loins of Yahuwah himself. Indeed, all who are born from above are born directly from the loins of Yahuwah, are born directly from the loins of Melchizedek, and not from the loins of Levi and not from the loins of Levi. See, what you have to understand is the uh, everything was given for us as an example, as a foreshadowing, as an example. For instance, uh, even the heckle in the wilderness, that in the, the tent of meeting in the wilderness and the heckle at Jerusalem. Both were built to the exact specifications 
that Yahuwah gave Musha to follow. They were built to the exact specifications of the heckle that already existed in Shamayim from eternity to eternity. It was an exact replica of what already existed in Shamayim. Thus, Musha, uh, thus our ancestors had to build it to that exact specifications. Why? Because unless they did so, Yahuwah could not dwell amongst them. He had to have a place for which he could dwell. For which he could dwell. Um, something like, uh, I can't I think of the name off the top of my head, but it, it's like uh, an environmental tent. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. It's like an environmental tent where you go into it and, and it's germ free, you know, where it's a germ free environment where, where no germs can get into it. Uh, the, the same concept, the same concept. Uh, it had to be built to the exact specifications of what was in Shamayim and it had to be set apart to the exact specifications of how the heckle was set apart in Shamayim. Otherwise, he couldn't dwell amongst our people because he would have consumed them because there was no uncleanness in him. So this was an example, both an example of what already existed in Shamayim and it was given so that he would have a place to dwell. But again, I need you to hear me that it was given as an example to show our ancestors the workings, the workings of the heckle, the order of the heckle that already existed in Shamayim from eternity in, that already existed. The very anointing oil that he gave directions to Musha to, to make, to the to uh, with exact specifications this anointing oil what i need you to understand was the very scent of yah was the very scent of yah thus uh, they could not repeat those ingredients it was forbidden for our ancestors to repeat those ingredients it was the very scent of Yah. And thus, when the Kohen Gadol, when the Kohen put on that anointing, they walked around and they had the very scent of Yah on them. The very scent of Yah. Even the Luhim Kihuna itself, even the Luhim Kihuna itself, or priesthood, Kihuna being Hebrew for priesthood, was merely an example was merely a foreshadowing of what already existed in Shamayim. The workings of the temple, the animal offerings, and the confession to the Kohen, and the atonement, and everything that occurred at the earthly heckle was to teach us the workings of the heckle of what goes on in Shamayim. Of what goes on in Shamayim. And so the Luim Kihuna was also given as an example to a nation of Kohim, to a nation of priests, to show them by example how to be Kohim, and to show them by example what it looks like and what it means to be set apart to the Most High Yah. And to show them by example the workings of the heckle, the workings, the order of the heckle, which is the exact order of the heckle in Shamayim. It's the exact order of the heckle in Shamayim. It still goes on. Everything still goes on as it did on earth as it did on earth. The only thing that's not needed now is an offering bucket because a perfect offering has been made for all time. But when his people transgress, we still have to go to the door of the heckle. We still have to go to the door of the heckle to the Kohen, to the Kohen Gadol, and make confession, and make confession. 
We do not have to bring an offering again because a perfect offering has been made, but we do have to bring the offering of a uh, broken and contrite heart. We do have to bring the offering of a broken and contrite heart. His word declares these he will not despise. This he will not despise. And we make confession to our high priest, and then he makes atonement for us. He makes atonement for us in the exact order that is prescribed in Torah, in the exact order that took place at the Heckel at Jerusalem and that took place at the tent of meeting in the wilderness. You see, it's Torah is eternal. It is eternal. It is eternal. So it was given as an example, as an example. Yahukam and the Immersa was a Kohen, John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a Kohen as his father, Zachariah, or what the world calls, who the world calls Zechariah, was a Kohen Gadol. He was a high priest. He was a Kohen Gadol. Thus, Yahukanan the Immersa was a Kohen from the loins of Levi. From the loins of Levi. You see, he represented the very end of the earthly Luim, Kihuna, a Levitical priesthood. He represented the end of it. He prepared the way of Melchizedek, of Melchizedek. Yahusha represented the installment of the Melchizedek, Melchizedek, Kihuna, Melchizedek, Kihuna. He represented the beginning of that. And those who were born from above, those who were born from above, those of us who were born from above, where the Melchizedek King Huna resides are part of a nation of Kohim and are indeed Kohim in the order of Melchizedek, being born from the very loins of Melchizedek himself, being born from above as the Ruach of Melchizedek resides in us. And thus, we are his sons. We are born from his loins not from the loins of Levi. We are born from his loins. Thus, we are a nation of Kohim in the order of Melchizedek. All of us, all of us. Now, you and I know that Hebrew Yashalites, we descend from the loins of Shem. Shem was the first uh, Kohim of Yasharal. Yahuwah himself is Kohim Gadol of this order. We descend from Shem. We descend from Shem, but even if you do not descend from the loins of Shem, hear me, if you are born from above, you are no different than the native Yashalite, and you are indeed a Kohen in the order of Melchizedek if you were born from above. Some may disagree with this. It makes no difference to me. I must speak truth. I must speak truth. I don't serve man. I serve Yahuwah. I serve Yahuwah, and I speak his truth. I speak his truth. Those born from the loins of Yahuwah, from the loins of Melchizedek, are indeed Kohim in the order of Melchizedek because, <laughs> hear me, the stranger is no different than the native born. The stranger is no different than the native born. As the native born is, so is the stranger before Yahuwah. He is no different than a native born. He is a Yashalite. And if you are a Yashalite, you are a part of a greater nation of Kohim. You are a part of a greater nation of Kohim. As it is written in Shamuf, Numbers, the 19th chapter, verse 5 and 6, it reads, Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all peoples. For all the earth, all the arets is mine, and you shall be to me a reign of Kohim, of priests, a set-apart nation, and you shall be to me a reign of Kohim, a set-apart nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Yashar'al. It is written in Kapha Alaf or First Peter, the second chapter, verse 9 through 10, starting at verse 9. But you are a chosen race a royal kihuna or priesthood, a set-apart nation, excuse me, he's repeating numbers, 
a people for a possession, that you should proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now the people of Allah. And this is alluding to Husha. This is alluding to Husha. Who had not obtained compassion. This is still alluding to Husha. Pity. But now obtained compassion. But now obtained compassion. So we now are a nation of Kohim. Not born from the loins of Levi. But born from above. From the loins of Melchizedek himself. Melchizedek meaning my sovereign is a deck. My sovereign is righteous. Yahuwah is our sovereign. Yahuwah is the only righteous one. We are born directly from his loins. Thus we are in the order of Melchizedek. We are Kohen in the order of Melchizedek. And not unlike the earthly Luid, Luim Kihuna, who was set apart as an example, to show a nation of Kohim how to be Kohim, to show a nation of Kohim what it looked like and what it meant to be set apart to the Most High Yah. We have been scattered amongst the nations. We have been scattered amongst the Gentiles to be Kohim to them, to show them what it looks like and what it means to be set apart to the Most High Yah. We have been placed here to be mediators for them. We have been placed here to be bearers of the salt of the covenant so that we may salt the offerings that ascend to Yahuwah so that it is a sweet smelling aroma into his nostrils so that when those who are immersed in the true name of Yahusha, when they, when they undergo the mikhbah tabalah and go underneath the water, symbolic of the death, and when they come up from underneath the water, symbolic of the resurrection, going under the water, symbolic of being, uh, symbolic of the death and the burial, and coming up symbolic of being resurrected. We, the Kohen of Yah, in the order of Melchizedek, when they die, we are bearers of the salt of the covenant. We have been given the charge to salt them with the salt of the covenant as no offerings are to be presented to the Most High Yah without being salted with the salt of the covenant. So we have been given the charge as Kohen to salt them so that that offering ascends to Shamayim as a sweet smelling aroma in the nostrils of the Most High Yah. In the nostrils of the Most High Yah. Who is Melchizedek? Melchizedek is Yahuwah himself. We are representatives of Melchizedek. We are Kohim in the order of Melchizedek. No different than Shem. No different than Nuach. No different than Adam. No different than Shaif. We are representatives. representatives. We are representatives of Melchizedek. No different than Aharon was a representative of his father. Levi, because Levi, if you read the apocryphal scriptures, was given the priesthood. He was given the priesthood. It was given to him. It was given to him forever and thus passed down to his sons and thus passed down to his sons. And so no different than Aharon being a representative of Levi or Luai. We, as Kohim, are representatives of our father, Yahuwah, Melchizedek, and we are Kohim in the order of Melchizedek. I pray that this teaching has been a baracha to you. I pray that you have been edified. I pray that you have been enlightened. I pray that it has been a true baracha to you on this day. 
Yahuwah barak you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Yahuwah lift up his face towards you and give you shalom. Thus you shall put my name on the banim, on the children of Yahshua all, and I myself shall barak them. Amen.